Welcome back to LightTac. I'm Jim Jansen. In this video series, we're going to cover Cisco Meeting Server 3.1, specifically customization of invitation and email templates. This is part one in the video series, Write the Template. So come with me as we configure LightTac. short hiatus, we are back in the LightTac studios. Today's video series will be regarding Cisco Meeting Server 3.1, invitation slash email templates. This is part one, write the template. In April 2020, Cisco introduced WebBridge 3 and Web App. This is going to be the replacement for CMA or Cisco Meeting App with the WebRTC. In our LightTac studios, we have recorded videos on how you can brand your web app using locally hosted files on Cisco Meeting Server and how to brand your files using a web server. Up to now, we have not addressed invitation templates, and that has changed dramatically with the introduction of web app. And we're going to look at those new features. We're going to talk about how to script the invitation slash email templates and how to script the web server in order to receive those invitation templates on your web app. So I highly encourage you right now to download the Cisco Meeting Server 3.1 customization guide. Go over the chapter four for invitation templates as well as the other branding methods. So in chapter four of the customization guide, we see invitation text customization is done via the use of a template just like on previous versions. But one thing we should note is that on upgrade to 3.1, administrators must recreate all custom email invite templates as there is no migration path for the existing custom email invite templates from the previous release to 3.1. What does this mean? It means basically if you had customized your invitation templates and you upgrade, they're not going to copy the old invitation templates and put them into the new release of 3.1. And there's two reasons for that. First of all, we want to have a clean slate when we actually uh, upgrade you. And second of all, the way that the scripting language is uh, now being used in 3.1 is totally different than the previous versions. We'll look at that later. The other thing we want to note is that Meeting Server 2.9 introduced the custom email invites for use with the Cisco Meeting Server web app, like we mentioned earlier. So that's going to be something changed. This allows the administrator to create and upload different email invitation templates so that the web app users can send an email invite in a language of their choice to other people to join future meetings. They can also send email invites appropriate to different audiences, for example, an external audience and an internal audience. We also note that Cisco is highly recommending that you do locally hosted branding for the web app and custom email invites. However, if you have more complex deployments like a multi-tenant deployment, you will have to use the remote branding server. I had a use case scenario where this came into play, and this is what prompted me to make this video. The customer's use case was that he wanted a different background for IVR and call branding, different uh, background for the web app. That's not possible if you do local branding. So we had to come up with a method where he can have the call branding, the IVR branding, and his web app branding on a web server. This becomes more complicated as the web server has to be able to run a script to retrieve the template, 
that we choose to present to the audience or the user. So looking at Chapter 4.3, Overview of the Customization Procedure for Web Server Hosted Branding for Web App Using the WebBridge 3, we recommend using locally hosted branding for the custom email invite templates with Web App. And they give you a link in the guide uh, to see how you can do locally hosted branding. And like I mentioned earlier, my use case scenario required the customer to use a web server for all his branding files that he needed to use. We also note that all invitation templates must be provided in UTF-8 format. Extended ASCII characters are not supported. Uh, the UTF-8 format invitation template Dot text file needs to have a Unix line ending of LF, not CRLF, like in Windows. And if you omit the Unix line ending, that will result in the file not working for you in branding. So they tell us that to configure the remote web server by creating a server-side script that can produce the query string correctly to ensure that it returns the requested invitation template that we want. Cisco Developer provides a GitHub uh, sample of how to do this. However, we're going to have a GitHub that I created with my GitHub. We will have explanations on how the script will work and some sample files. So in order for us to get this web server to start serving up invitation templates, we have to do some pre-configurations on the CMS server. First, using the API, we'll create a call branding profile, and in the invitation template field, we're going to specify a URL for the web server where the template is being held, and you need to specify the full path of the server-side script. For example, in the guide, it shows us HTTP slash slash 192.0.2.0 slash branding slash invitation.cgi, so this developer use a CGI script on his web server to fetch the template files. When using the web app, it will try to add the requested language or string, for example, internal, as the query string for the URL, depending on the selected option in the dropdown list when the user is choosing a language. For example, HTTP colon slash slash 192.0.2.0 slash branding slash invitation dot CGI is in our invitation field and then when he goes to the web app and he drops down and chooses the language Spanish, web app will append to that URL language equals ES underscore ES. The language ES is Spanish, uh, the country region ES means Spain, and so this is the template that it should be looking for. Or you can do something like HTTP colon slash slash 192.0.2.0 slash branding slash invitation dot CGI and language is equal to internal. We use the call branding profile to customize invitations at a system level. That means as part of a global system profile, we can do it at a tenant basis as a part of a tenant definition or as a per space basis. Of course, CMS is going to go from the bottom to the top to check for the call branding profile. It's going to check your code space first, see if that one exists. If it does exist, it's going to use that as the call branding profile. If it doesn't exist on the code space, it'll check the tenant level, and then finally the system level. Web app offers support for invitation templates for different languages and for different audiences. There are now 21 default language invitation templates for the web app on the meeting server to choose from. The invitation template takes this format. So when we configure our invitation template, it has to be in the name format of invitation underscore template underscore lowercase letters underscore uppercase letters. This is the IANA language subtag registry method. For instance, fr underscore capital C capital A dot text, where the lowercase fr represents French and the uppercase ca represents the region Canada. When we write the invitation template, there are a set of rules that govern how we should configure and format our text files. First, there is a 10,000 byte limit on the size of the invitation template dot text file. 
All invitation templates must be provided in UTF-8 format. This is where it's going to be important to use your Notepad++ and make sure its format of text files are used in UTF-8. Extended ASCII characters are not supported. Some examples of the extended ASCII character chart show us things like the the A with the two dots above it, or an E with a slash. Maybe your language uh, has these kind of special characters. They're not going to be supported in your text file. So when you're writing your Notepad++ text file and you start typing and you see these extended ASCII characters, you should try to choose a different format of your keyboard so that those characters don't come up. If you use extended ASCII characters, your file will not work. In UTF-8 format, invitation template text files need to be need to have a Unix ending, like LF, not CRLF as Windows uses. Omitting the Unix line endings will result in the file not working. Language.txt files should have the appropriate language tags for its language variant, as defined by the IANA language subtag registry, where the two lowercase letters indicate the language code and the uppercase letters represent the country code we talked about earlier. For example, EN represents English, GB represents the United Kingdom. Part of the file between the invitation underscore template and the dot text suffix can use alphanumerics and underscores up to 32 characters in any of the file regular expressions. We have now sat down and opened up our Notepad++ text editor and we're considering how to configure our invitation templates. The first thing we notice is we're going to have to consider our header. We note that all custom email templates must now start with subject colon followed by an empty line to separate the body text. The subject header is used to generate the email link that sets the text specified in the header as the subject of the email. The header cannot contain new line characters. The syntax is subject, colon, your subject, followed by an email template. So what does this mean? When I go to the web app and I go to my space, and I click on the little envelope in the web app, I have options to copy the invitation template or email the invitation template. If I click email the invitation template and we receive the file back from the web server, I'm looking in the text file for this header, the header called subject. And that line header in the text file is going to tell me, it's going to tell me what subject should I put into my email client's subject line. And then the separation of the empty line tells me the rest of this text file is regarding the body text that should go into the email template. This is critical in the creation of our invitation templates. The other thing we're going to notice is the format. As I mentioned earlier on in the video series, uh, when we upgrade from an earlier version of CMS to 3.1, that we're not going to copy the old customized invitation templates into 3.1. And the reason is because of the new syntax that we can be allowed to use. When we look at the new syntax, we can see that we can use variables, loops, conditions, includes, callbacks, and comments, and nested loops and comments, as well as combined as required. So in this video series, I'm only going to cover the variables of the invitation templates, as the other loops and conditions and etc., get more complicated and there's not enough time in this video series to cover every option. Maybe we'll come back and re readdress those later at a different time. Just suffice it to say that variables is probably the simplest format and method to create your invitation template. So what are some of the variables? The template can contain both variables and conditions. This allows for a single template to be used for multiple spaces, gives consistent feeling to the invitations, and our variable format is going to be percent, variable name, percent, and that will be substituted with the content of the variable in CMS. The variables that are currently defined are detailed below. First, we see name. This will be replaced by the name of the code space. Then we see URI. The code space URI that can be used to join by URI in the web app or dial in on the endpoint. The numeric ID, this is called the ID of the code space. So when you're calling into a meeting and it asks you 
to provide the space call ID, this is what we're referring to. The passcode is the passcode assigned into the code space. The IVR numbers is an array of objects for the IVR number to dial. And then there's the web bridge address, and this is an array of objects that contain the label, address, and hyperlink of the web bridge. So here's an example of a template that we might have configured. You note the header, the subject, and it has some conditions there. We see the numeric ID with a nested loop. We see the WA or WebBridge address and other configurations. This is going to be a good stopping point where we can go on to the next video and actually do a demonstration of how to configure the invitation templates and see the caveats and mistakes that people can make when creating their invitation template. So I'll see you on the other side.